Hello, I am Anthony J. Piccioni. I am the founder and artistic director of the Talking Out Virtual Play Festival in support of mental health awareness. And if you'd like to learn more about our festival, please watch this video. So the Talking It Out Festival started as an in-person reading, like a one-time, like minimalist stage reading event at the Dramatist Guild Foundation. This was March 2019. And it was just me and a couple of my friends. We were getting together to read some scripts that some playwrights had sent us, all based around the theme of mental health. And I was originally only planning to do it for like a one-time thing, because like it was a fundraiser actually for my own play, a therapy session with myself back then. But then it went so well, like it was so well received. I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe I could do this on a more consistent basis. And initially I was thinking of doing it in person, but A, it's kind of hard to produce an in-person play festival on such a consistent basis. Like I admire everyone who's able to do it, but also then the pandemic happened and then, uh, theater shut down and all that and long story short like I decided okay I got these play submissions from these playwrights I have zoom there's a lot of cool stuff going on on zoom and so why not just put it up there every four months for free to the public to watch and so we do it every November every March and every July you know this is a topic that I'm very passionate about I've been passionate about it for a long long time uh if I think anyone who's familiar with my writing is aware of that, but you know, like, and a lot of our actors too, like, like they had their own experiences with mental health as well. And that's why they were drawn to it. I actually talked to some of the playwrights who are involved in this particular performance. And I was really, really inspired by the stories they told that inspired them to write these plays. So I don't want to give away too much about the content of these plays, but I hope people will come see this performance and maybe they'll consider donating too. It was a thrill the, to see the reaction to the first performance. We, it was a sold out audience, like it's a virtual audience. So, but it was people from all over the world. Cause you know, we have actors from different corners of America and the world. So naturally we got lots of different people seeing it. And, um, as far as I'm concerned, like the audience loved it, the playwrights, like the, feedback I got from all the playwrights in terms of seeing like their plays produced in such an unconventional manner. It, it meant the world to me to hear that because as a playwright myself, like I know, I know how sensitive a writer can be in terms of seeing how their work is being presented when it's in the hands of someone else. And it's been really good. And, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, the first performance, I was really nervous putting on because I never produced a virtual theater show before like zoom was still very much something new in 2020 and so but going into this performance if i'm being honest i'm more i'm trying not to get too confident because obviously you have to be at least a little nervous going into anything just so you can drive yourself to perfection as a producer or director or whatever i was told that to my actors don't never get too confident we're always trying to achieve perfection but like i think i feel more confident now with the reaction to the last festival performance and i hope this performance will be at least as good if not better and these are all some really great very unique plays i wanted to get like sort of an eclectic collection of plays to present because i don't think there's one writer wrong way to write a play or to tell a story as long as they're all dealing with mental health in one way or another and i hope the audience likes them too as much as i do more than anything else, what I hope the audience gets out of this performance and the festival, broadly speaking, is is the fact that mental health, it doesn't come in one form and lots of people deal with certain mental illnesses in their life. And I always say that like, if you yourself don't have any sort of mental health disorder, then chances are you know someone in your life who you're close with that does. And I hope what people will see is, you know, First of all, maybe they'll see something in their own lives that they can relate to in at least one of the plays. But if not, I hope maybe they get a better insight into something that they weren't familiar with at all in their own lives. And maybe they'll see that this is something that we need to take more seriously, that this is something we need to be honest about. We need to be open to talk about it and have a conversation and also to be more sympathetic to people who might be dealing with these conditions because you never know who might be dealing 
with something like this in their lives. You never really know on the surface. Like, like, like I was on a podcast a while back with someone and she referred, the host referred to it as invisible illnesses. And it's, that's absolutely true because you don't know until you really get to know them, what they might be dealing with. So I think we need more compassion and I hope maybe the audience will come away with more compassion too. And it's really amazing to see all of us come together for the same reason to create art, to create theater, and more specifically with this to raise awareness for mental health. And I think more than anything else, I'm excited to be working with these actors so closely. They should watch the Talking It Out Festival because it's because mental health awareness doesn't get talked about enough. It's getting beginning talked about more and more, I've noticed within the past few years, like definitely more than say when I was a teenager and dealing with these issues at an intense degree, but I also think people aren't talking about it in a completely honest way and how ugly it can be and how it impacts the lives of people who surround them, whether it's the people dealing with the conditions themselves or their family members or their close friends or their significant other, or whoever, like, and I think, I hope at least, maybe that's something they will think about when they see these plays and i think they should come see these plays because i think the reason one of the reasons at least i selected these plays was because i think they do a good job at at varying degrees highlighting real world issues that i think are very ugly and can have a negative impact on people and like the only way we solve it is to talk about it and i would invite the audience to be part of that conversation by coming to see the festival for this performance in particular, uh, I'm really grateful that the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival is uh, contributing part of the proceeds to the National Asian American uh, Pacific Islander Mental Health Association. Um, being someone who has a background in, in mental health and being an Asian, I think that organization is very is is close to me and I, I support what they do. And as someone who grew up in America as an Asian uh, from the Asian culture, I know how uh, difficult it is for Asians in particular uh, to accept the idea of mental health and mental wellness and, and help when someone has a disorder. Uh, not only am I from a different culture, I think I'm from a different age. I'm, um, it, when I was a child, particularly, uh, as an immigrant, uh, Asians just didn't talk about mental illness. And if someone had a, a, a disorder, it, it was a real source of ignominy. People were very ashamed of it and would not uh, be willing to talk about it. So I think organizations like the the National Asian American Pacific Islander Mental Health Association are doing a lot of really good work to bring uh, to bring those uh, those issues to the forefront and and work toward eliminating the stigmas, which are still very great right now. And um, the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival is doing the same thing on a broader scale, uh, using entertainment and art to perhaps uh, address a lot of the stigmas and a lot of the um, the, the ways that people do not uh, look at uh, mental health and that they should. Hi, I'm Richard Wong. I wrote a play called Caucasian that it will be presented as part of the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival this month. Um, I hope you all watch it and enjoy it. And if you'd like to learn more about it, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it. I would like every person in, in the country to be a, aware and familiar with the Talking It Out uh, Virtual Arts Festival because it, it's just such an important uh, uh, event uh, throughout the year. Uh, I think it's, it's a very uh, necessary event right now. There's been a lot of attention given to uh, mental health these days. Um, and unfortunately, uh, most of it, I think, isn't, isn't really discussing mental health as much as mental illness. 
because the the talk always escalates after there's a tragedy, like there's a shooting or or someone suffers from PSTD or or some other disorder and, and some tragedy happens. Well, I'd like to think that uh, mental health is is on the other side of that. If, if we pay more attention to mental health, maybe we can avoid mental illness and, and we can avoid the tragedies that arise from mental illness. Um, I was on the peripheries of, of the counseling world for over 20 years. And, and so I have a, a, a little deeper understanding of uh, an awareness and appreciation perhaps uh, of mental health and mental wellness. I have a degree in counseling, uh, school counseling. And, uh, and I just think that I wish we would all take care of our mental wellness like we do our physical wellness. Most of us go to see a doctor at least once a year, sometimes every six months, we get a checkup. We're not sick, but we wanna make sure we don't get sick uh, physically. And I wish we could apply that to our uh, mental health as well. Maybe if we did that, we could catch depression with a little D before it turns into clinical depression with a big D. Uh, if we can catch anxiety and, and a, a host of other disorders and deal with them, then, then I think the, the world would be not only a happier safe place, but a safer place that people wouldn't, uh, wouldn't let mental illness and, and disorders get to the point that, um, that it, it ends in tragedy. And the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival addresses that, but not in a direct clinical way, but in, in a, a more entertaining way. I, I think if we had more uh, entertainment venues and, and uh, activities that would address mental health, um, and not in, in a way that beats you over the head that says, if you have a problem, go see a, a therapist, but in a way that that provokes some thought and and encourages people to think about it, uh, that I hope my play does. I first heard about uh, the Talking It Out uh, Festival about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Um, at that point, I had written a the first draft or maybe the first five drafts of my play, uh, Caucasian, and it dealt with. Uh, LGBTQ issues, which uh, I know the Talking It Out Festival uh, is very interested in, as well as uh, racial issues. And um, I just thought, well, this is a this is a venue that that could would really understand my play and, and would make the best of it. Uh, the play deals with the five stages of grief, and I had submitted it somewhere else, and I don't think they understood the five stages of grief. And so I thought, well, if anyone would understand that, it would be a an arts festival dedicated to mental health. So I was very happy that it was chosen. I wrote Caucasian uh, because it, it's an idea that had been germinating in my head uh, for a really long time. It's ostensibly about Asian issues, but it's really, as much about LGBTQIA issues and the way that people look at people who are different from themselves. And at its heart, the play is really about the, the last stage of grief, which is acceptance. Uh, acceptance of ourselves, acceptance of people that we see as different from ourselves. And, um, and I hope, uh, what people take away from it is that by understanding and accepting, we realize that we're not really that different from each other. Uh, we may be from different cultures. We, we may um, be of different genders and different sexual orientations, but we're really, we're all humans. And, and because of that, we have a lot of similarities that very often we don't see and we don't realize. Um, what I'd like this play to, to ultimately do for people is to help them understand and, and perhaps observe uh, things that they, they've never realized and observed before. The, the, term, the title came to me, and, and I'm, I know that the muse just struck me because I'm not sure I could have come up with it on my own, but 
I I was trying to think of a title for the play that would reflect the idea that Asians and Caucasians are really not that dissimilar. We have a lot more similarities. And if we understood each other's cultures, uh, I think we could understand each other better and, and accept each other. And we wouldn't have any of the conflicts that we've had. And um, at the time, there had been, uh, it was during the, the COVID crisis, and uh, there was a lot of Asian hate going on at the same time, and sadly, it's still going on. But I just thought, well, if people would just understand that we're really not that different, we're not the enemy, we, we're all in this together. And it it just came to me that the word Asian is embedded in the word Caucasian. And I never realized that. I mean, I had been using those two words my whole life, and I thought, well, gosh, <laughs> those two words are basically the same. I mean, they're half the letters are the same letters. And and that's the type of realization I hope people will get as they watch um, this play, that, yeah, we have a lot of similarities and a lot of things that they that people have said perhaps their whole lives, really, uh, it, it shows our similarities more than our differences. The plot is essentially a father and a son uh, having a conversation. And that's, uh, in, in 20 minutes, that's the entire plot. Um, and uh, the, the son uh, discloses a realization to his father and it sends his father uh, through the five stages of grief. Um, I, I like to think it's funny. I, I, I have an odd sense of humor. My kids and, and, uh, those, those of us who are dads know kids never think their dad's jokes are funny. I think the play is pretty funny. Um, and I, I would like to, I know it's, it, it's a, um, the, the issues are very serious that it deals with, uh, racism, uh, a Asian, uh, hate, um, prejudice against the LGBTQIA community. Uh, so those are pretty heavy topics, but I, I want to deal with them in a, a somewhat lighthearted way to, to showcase that, you know, all the prejudice, the bias, it's pretty absurd. And, and in a lot of ways, the play is, is kind of an absurd play. Um, but I wanted to, to use the absurdity and the silliness to show that hey, all of this is pretty silly. I mean, why are we in conflict with each other? It's just silly. When people watch the play, I would like them to see that people who are different from themselves really aren't that different. Uh, people of other cultures, people of other sexual orientations, uh, people who are of color, we're all basically the same. We're humans. And uh the the things that people see that make us different really showcase how similar we are. And uh, there, are, I, I've thrown in a lot of, uh, I, I would think, pretty insensitive comments that people have said to me through my life. And and I don't think they're bad people for saying it. I think very often people say things that they don't realize are insensitive because they don't understand the other culture. And I hope that by showcasing some of these, these comments in a humorous way, uh, people will see that, oh, well, yes, that was kind of insensitive and maybe irrational to say that. And maybe we shouldn't be saying things like that to people anymore. <laughs> I think when people see my play, I hope they will say, hey, I never thought of it like that before. Or, wow, that, that's an interesting way to look at it. I've never looked at it quite in that way. Uh, I hope there will be a lot of aha moments. And I, I hope those aha moments involve not just uh, the Asian community, but the LGBTQIA community and, and, and community. Uh, I, I hope that it, it just... Uh, encourages people to to take the concepts that I present in the play and maybe broaden them to the larger scope of, of their life and and be able to apply it to uh, to other areas 
uh, because it, it's it's not just a play about uh, about the Asian community or the LGBTQIA community. I, I think it's a a much broader uh, play about under, human understanding and, and understanding ourselves in ways that maybe we hadn't quite understood before. Well, I think it's really important for people to to support activities like the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival, as well as other uh, theater, community theater, perhaps, uh, any artistic uh, efforts uh, in their community that they they can be involved in. You know, we all know the, the superstars. We know Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and uh, people like that. What a lot of people don't realize is that there are thousands, perhaps millions of people who are making a, a living as actors. They're never going to be household names, but they make decent livings being actors. And there are, are scores of others who have a, an interest in it, a burning desire that perhaps they don't want it to make it their profession, but it, it's still a passion for them. And I think those people need to be uh, support it. And um, if we can do it in any way possible from just going to a local community theater and buying a ticket or making donations to a local theater, um, for this performance in particular, uh, I'm really grateful that the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival is uh, contributing part of the proceeds to the National Asian American uh, Pacific Islander Mental Health Association. Um, being someone who has a background in, in mental health and being an Asian, I think that organization is very is is close to me, and I, I support what they do. And as someone who grew up in America as an Asian uh, from the Asian culture, I know how uh, difficult it is for Asians, in particular. Uh, to accept the idea of mental health and mental wellness and and help when someone has a disorder. Uh, not only am I from a different culture, I think I'm from a different age. I'm uh, it, When I was a child, particularly uh, as an immigrant, uh, Asians just didn't talk about mental illness. And if someone had a, a, a disorder, it it was a real source of ignominy. People were very ashamed of it and would not uh, be willing to talk about it. So I think organizations like the the National Asian American Pacific Islander Mental Health Association are doing a lot of really good work to bring uh, to bring those uh, those issues to the forefront and and work toward eliminating the stigmas, which are still very great right now. And um, the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival is doing the same thing on a broader scale, uh, using entertainment and art to perhaps uh, address a lot of the stigmas and a lot of the, um, the, the ways that people do not uh, look at uh, mental health and that they should. I, I hope a lot of people uh, We'll watch the, the plays. Um, the cast and crew have put a lot of work into it. Uh, I've I've only been to a one uh, rehearsal, but I know I, I, I've never been involved in in uh, theater at this level. And just from what little I've done thus far, I'm realizing there's a lot of work that goes into it. And <laughs> I, I always thought, well, maybe I would like to be an actor. I'm not sure I could put that much work into it. So they put a lot of work into it. A lot of people have have put a lot of effort into it. And and so I hope people will watch it and and will enjoy it and will um will appreciate all the work that has gone into this. I'm Richard Wong. Uh I hope that everyone will attend the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival and enjoy my play, Caucasian. Uh, if you come, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll come with an open mind and uh, leave just a little more enlightened than you came in. 
I think the viewers must watch the Talking It Out Festival in March because it's dealing with mental health issues in a format that's really widely accessible to audiences, that is accessible to anyone who has a computer, um, and is supporting a good cause as well, that the donations are going to support um, a mental health charity. Um, and so that is why you should come see it. Um, and also to learn about mental health, um, to learn about um, depression, to learn about these things in a format that's um, more theatrical, more enjoyable, more fun um, than other formats. My name is Lauren Silverstein. I'm a playwright of Confessions of a College Student um, that is being performed at the Talking It Out Virtual Arts Festival. If you want to learn more about my play, please come listen to this conversation. So I first found out about it um, on the website New York City Playwrights, um, which I really like looking at for things to apply to for playwrights. And I found the way it was talked about there, about um, a virtual theater arts festival about mental health. Um, I thought that I really connected to that and that it felt like something that was important. Um, it felt like, yeah, it, it, it felt like a, a, a worthy like cause to actually support um, and to put my play towards. And um, it also connected to things that I, I already knew were in the play that I picked, which um, is Confessions of a College Student. I knew that it could speak to the theme of the festival, and I also felt like the theme of the festival could speak to the play. The idea for this play um, was largely autobiographical. Um, it's taken from my own memories and experience. Um, uh, in my life, my relationship with my parents and my experience in high school and college. Um, and it was also developed as like a way to deal with and cope with like experiences that happened in my life. Um, so I, I had to write it because I wasn't dealing with it any other way. And writing was a form of, of closure for myself. Um, and then once I wrote it, I realized once I tried to write it anyway, I realized that it was, I think it would help someone else. Um, and I think it would help an audience that needs to see a play about someone who can live through something terrible and come out the other side and who can grow and develop from something that happened in their life. Um, and I think it also speaks to um, how we talk about mental health. Um, which is why I love this festival, because it's talking it out. It's in the name about how we talk about mental health, how how can we deal with it, which I think is is what I really admire about about my play. The story is called Confessions of a College Student, and it's about a character named Dolly and also another character named Lauren, who are the same person, um, and how they're trying to deal with um, this, this trauma that happened in their life, um, that, that they didn't, that they were very depressed for a long time and that they didn't have help. Um, and Dolly is still stuck in that, um, while Lauren, a little older, is able to reflect on her, her story a bit more. Um, and so they tell, Lauren's telling this story, um, as, Dolly is experiencing it. I want the audience to get an understanding of what it feels like to have depression, as well as an understanding of how hard it is to talk about mental health issues in general, um, and how, but yet how important it is to talk about them, um, how we can't really have closure, have um, any sort of healing without dealing with it or talking about it. Um, but that each person who's encountering mental health issues in someone else does not need to be involved in the recovery process. Um, and that like, it can be difficult to deal with um, mental health issues, even, um, even if it's some, especially if it's someone close to you.
I think I'm looking forward to see um, how people react to, to a virtual uh, play, virtual plays a, around mental health and about um, really about like mothers and, and daughter relationships in some ways. Um, and I think also I'm, I'm interested to see how we can connect in a virtual format despite it being after COVID, um, having theater in that format. I'm also excited to see the, the ways in which um, like each play can talk to each other, um, that despite being different, we, there's like ways that these plays can be in conversation with each other and um, in conversation with the audience that's coming to see it. I think it's important for community members to support local theaters and especially festival because it shows that um, you're receptive to the messages that um, you're hearing in these theater productions um, and that you care about continuing to spread these these messages to other people. Um, like these donations are helping um, talking it out continue. They're helping um, this charity um, continue doing work for um, other people. And it's also important to show that you, you support the, the messages that are, are being spread. I think I just want to mention that um, I think this festival is, is supported by a ton of creative people, a ton of um, really amazing people who are dedicating their time and, and their assistance to putting on a really great show. Um, so I'm really happy that it's happening. My name is Lauren Silverstein. I'm um, a playwright and I'm playwright of a play called Confessions of a College Student, which is being put on by the Talking It Out Play Festival. Um, I hope that you'll all come see it and that you come talk about uh, mental health issues um, with other people. Please support this festival and support um, all these artists who are putting it on. Well, I think because we're in a crazy time right now um, where this kind of thing, mental health is, is not, I don't know what the word is, not uh, cherished enough or looked at enough or taken care of. Um, and I, I just think uh, we need to focus more on this. Pamela Meek, uh, playwright uh, for this wonderful festival, Talking It Out. And uh, the name of my play is uh, How to Be a Good Mom When You've Got a Schizophrenic Mother for a Role Model. Um, and I just uh, want you all to invite everybody you know and donate and support this and welcome everything that you see. I think I just heard about it online somehow. Oh, I know. I, I saw a, uh, might, have, might have even been with the drama guild, a, a notice of, you know, looking for plays about mental health awareness. So um, I figured my play, How to Be a Good Mom When You've Had a Schizophrenic Mother for a Role Model, that, that would fit <laughs> the genre. So I presented that, and um, Anthony got back to me pretty quickly, you know, within three days, saying, okay, you're in. Um, and and, uh, and it, is, it is about mental health and how to overcome it and thrive. So. I think people are scared of mental health, and I think um, if they can understand more about it, and um, at least in my play, I include some comedic uh, things so that people can laugh, and you know, when laughter helps you, you know, accept things. It's important because um, you can see how you can get past it. You can see how you can raise your child to not become like you were, you know, you can get over yourself and help your child. You can get over whatever your parents did to you. Um, it can help you figure out how to do all that. It can help you problem solve. Obviously, usually people need therapy to get through stuff, but um, the play can help you see that uh, it's okay to confront these things. It's okay to get past denial of having problems. And uh, it's okay. Well, I have been thinking about writing a memoir for a while, and, and um, 
And I, you know, and, and part of me uh, has learned that if if I if you get something out of you, out of your mind, get it out of you and put it over here so you can just have a, a relationship to it instead of it like engulfing your body. Um, you can, it helps you grow um, and, and get better and stronger. And so um, that's why I, uh, uh, I wrote it. And, um, and it really has, even though I had had a lot of therapy before that, I mean, I was, I'm, a, I'm a shrink, so I'm into therapy, but um, it's a good thing. So um, it just, uh, it helped me move on. Writing helps you move on. And I, I know, you know, there's fiction and there's everything else. And there's some fiction in mine because I changed some names so people wouldn't figure out who they were. But um, you're, the, the, there's that old saying, write what you know. So I wrote what I knew. And uh, it works. The title is, uh, you know, how to be a good mom when you've got a, a schizophrenic mother for a role model. And that's a little uh, scary and daunting Uh uh, but I think it pulls people in, but it's still, you know, I don't, do I want to go see that? Um, but uh, it, uh, you know, it's mixed up with some comedic stuff, but it, the story is about my being scared of becoming schizophrenic myself um, because it's an inher inherited disease and, um, and how I dealt with that. And, how I figured out how to be a good mom in spite of it. So, um, and it's, it's quite a journey and a lot of bumps along the way and mentors who helped me despite myself. And, and uh, you know, it, it's a way of uh, overcoming. It's teaching people how to thrive and get, get past whatever trauma has happened in your life and become better for it. I want them not to feel ashamed of whoever they are, whatever they've gone through, whatever they've done, um, that there's ways of coping and dealing and, and uh, getting past it. Um, it's, it's hard work. You have to be motivated, but you can do it. Well, I'm, I'm curious about what everybody else is writing about. Um, I haven't read any of them, so I don't know. Um, and I'm interested in the acting. I'm interested... Uh, in my play, being acted by someone other than me and watching somebody else do it, you know, because actors, are, they're very cool people and directors, you know, they, they just turn the words into life. And I, I just really enjoy that. I'm also curious about, I guess, what topics they're going to go over in theirs, what mental health issues they're going to talk about. It'll be entertaining and thought provoking and moving and profound and, um, you're not going to lose anything by watching. You're only going to gain. I think people should donate to things like this festival because um, there's not enough of it. Um, you know, we go to the movies and there's all these shotgun movies. I mean, what, what about movies about real people and real relationships and real struggles in humankind? You know, um, I think there needs to be more of that. And, and, you know, um, donating and, and supporting this will help help the, the, the entertainment industry grow into things that are more appropriate, in my opinion. I'm so excited to be part of this. I was so overwhelmed when he chose me and, and happy, and, and I'm happy for everybody else. And, and um, I hope everybody just invites everybody they know to send an email out, you know, blast out to everybody so it gets a good audience. Pamela Meek, uh, playwright. Uh, for this wonderful festival, Talking It Out. And uh, the name of my play is uh, How to Be a Good Mom When You've Got a Schizophrenic Mother for a Role Model. Um, and I just uh, want you all to invite everybody you know and donate and support this and welcome everything that you see.